Hi, this is Mike Maloney, and I'm joined by Adam Taggart once again. Adam, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Mike. How are you? Doing great. It's a real nice day here in Puerto Rico. Well, we've got some pretty big developments on the international front. Um, we're going to start here with an article from Mike Shedlock, better known as Mish, uh, titled A Brick House in an International Dollar Default by the United States. Um, Mish is basically talking about how the recent actions by the U.S. and its key allies have really provided a massive incentive for a lot of the other major countries around the world to accelerate their plans to de-dollarize. I know this is something you and I have talked a little bit about this, um, but we're now seeing uh, a, a tremendous acceleration in non-dollar denominated trade uh, begin to be considered by a lot of these BRIC countries. You know, BRIC stands for Brazil, um, Russia, India, China. Um, so Mike, what do you think about this? Because this is something that you have been warning about for a long time. Yeah, uh, all part of the uh, death of the global dollar standard presentation that I've been giving since 2009. Uh, and I've, I've covered it many times in the past. But what's interesting, the title is a brick house and, you know, a brick house. There used to be an old saying, people that live in glass houses shouldn't <laughs> throw stones because <laughs> you're going to break your own windows. And <clears throat> what I if people really should read this article, it makes a lot of sense. But then um, Mish asks some questions. Mike Shedlock asks some questions. Was it worth it? To answer that question, consider another set of questions. Is Putin still in power? Yes. Is the EU still dependent on Russian energy? Yes. Did sanctions help drive Russia into China's arms? Yes. <laughs> Is Russia truly globally isolated? No. Uh, did the Fed illegally violate the constitutional mandates? Yes. Did the U.S. force Russia into default, even though Russia uh, tries to pay its creditors? Yes. Uh, can Russia survive with the sanctions? Yes, easily. No matter, all these sanctions are not doing anything. Is China the big winner in this? Yes. And then uh, you go down a little further and it says, where are we? So it's, a, you know, uh, with that uh, musical interlude out of the way, let's recap where we are. Where are we? Or where we are. One, the U.S. did not default on its interest payments. Rather, it stole the dollar reserves of another country. Now that, if, if the, all of these uh, measures that we have used uh, financially, where we're using the banking system, to try to, uh, as a weapon, uh, that is nails in the coffin for the global dollar standard. All of this is going to hurt us severely in the future. We're not hurting them in the long run. They're going to be able to get by without us. They're probably going to come out of this stronger. What we're doing is, is uh, weakening the U.S. over the long run incredibly, because now everybody, all countries on the planet are going, oh, wow, the U.S. can do this. They can confiscate our assets if we have anything in the U.S. They can, uh, you know, freeze our reserves. So uh, number two, uh, the EU froze Putin's and some Russian oligarchs euro denominated assets, a far less stringent yet uh, still more severe measure or still a severe measure, I mean. So um, the EU has, has joined us casting doubts on having international assets and uh, all of these fiat currencies. Three, uh, points number one and two undermine the faith in fiat currency reserves. True. So what's left? Gold. Uh, four, a, Russian, a, a Russia bond default coming up and what it means. Uh, that, and that links to an article probably of his. Five, uh, Russia can easily survive, perhaps even thrive, isolated from the West, but it's going to be doing business with everybody else but us. What did it do to uh, say that we're no longer going to buy Russian oil? Well, it increases prices of gasoline here a little bit, but we're only, only 1.3% of our oil comes from Russia. So it doesn't do anything uh, as far as, uh, you know, uh, the president blaming rising gasoline prices on Russia. That's a bunch of baloney. Has nothing to do with the reason gasoline prices are 
rising, except maybe 1.3% of the rise. Six, U.S. sanctions policy drives China into Russia's loving arms, and it's all true. In the long run, everything that we have done will only hurt us, and it will strengthen uh, the other side of the de death of the global dollar standard dynamic. So the other side being Russia, China, the BRICS countries that you just talked about. Well, and, and just to really underscore that point, Mike, um, there is some pretty mind blowing news that was just announced today, which is, um, you know, one of the reasons for the US dollars strong hegemony as the world's reserve currency is it's what's called the petrodollar, which is if you want to buy oil from Saudi Arabia, you got to do it with dollars. Well, Saudi Arabia has been so concerned by some of the steps that the U.S. You know, has taken recently that Mish outlined there in his article that uh, I'm going to read an, a, a title here from this, this article from a few hours ago from the Wall Street Journal. Saudi Arabia considers accepting yuan instead of dollars for Chinese oil sales. I mean, this could be, folks, one of those events where you look back, you know, 40 years down the road and remember where you were the week that the petrodollar died. Um, I, you know, who knows what's going to happen uh, from here. But uh, this is a incredibly important step if indeed Saudi Arabia starts accepting other major world fiat currencies uh, for oil. Yes, it is. And, uh, you know, um, I think it was about five years ago. Uh, it may be more or less, but uh, we were talking a lot about uh, the ability. Uh, there, there's a futures exchange in China, the Shanghai Exchange. Saudi Arabia can put barrels of oil on that exchange, sell futures for yuan, but that same uh, exchange opened up gold contracts. So they started trading gold. So within minutes or even seconds, uh, Saudi Arabia can change the yuan into gold. So they can not only, not only uh, will they be able to take yuan, but they can take gold, putting a lot more demand on gold. And if you look at the amount of gold that Russia and China have accumulated in the past decade, it's, it's <laughs> quite a bit. Uh, and so uh, that dynamic uh, leads me into a tweet that I put out, fiat currency is, fiat currencies are basically the most bought and sold commodity in the world. Because whenever you buy something, you're selling your fiat currency. Whenever you sell something, you're buying fiat currency. So it is one half of every transaction. And, uh, and whether it's the yuan or the, uh, or the dollar or the ruble, uh, it's one half of every transaction that takes place on this planet, with the exception of maybe 0.000001%, something like that. Uh, uh, it, it, fiat currencies are the most bought and sold commodity, and we're destroying faith in them right now with all of these actions. When you destroy faith in it, that means the system can end. This war has the potential to plunge the entire world into a modern dark age. And uh, it, it's, it's extremely dangerous where we are going. And uh, the abuse that we have given fiat currencies, the global dollar standard, and the banking system in just the past month is just amazing. And people don't realize what the consequences could be. It's very true. And I, talking about abuse, I feel like this is going to be a case of the beatings will continue until morale improves. <laughs> I don't I don't see this abuse, uh, you know, lightening up anytime soon, given the, the decisions that are being made along the way here. Um, all right, uh, Mike, we've got a great meme here about uh, fiat currency debasement. Uh, but real quickly, before we get to it, folks, one commodity that is truly going through the roof and creating all sorts of investment opportunities is uranium. And I just want to let folks know because it's it's timely. Rick Rule is having a uranium boot camp this coming Saturday, March 19th. If you want to learn more about that, go to wealthion.com slash virtual uranium. All right, Mike, let's get to that theme. Okay, real simple. Where does the Fed store their US dollars? Answer, in the basement. <laughs> I want to thank everybody for watching. Thank you, Adam. Always a pleasure, Mike.